この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディ、ウェルカムエブリワン。アイムティアブ、アイムヒーフォーモーブルスーツ、ゼータ、ガンダム。Yes, I did it right.、Uh, episode 2 and maybe 3. Who knows? I don't know how much I'm going to watch today. I literally kind of just rolled out of bed and made tea and then sat down and started, re- started recording, which honestly is the way that I used to do a lot of my videos and I'm okay with continuing to do them. This morning has been weird.、Um, it is February 24th, 2022. And those who know, know we're in a really weird time globally and politically. Um, I try to stay away from a lot of that stuff as much as possible because it makes me, my brain hurt.、Um, I used to be really, really invested in politics.、Uh, and I've mentioned multiple times on the channel that I used to do political debate.、Um, and I've just watched the whole thing spiral out of, into insanity over the last couple of years and just decided to stay away from it. But war is breaking out. Russia is invading Ukraine, maybe. Um, for reasons that are utterly unclear, because the, the Kremlin's agenda and Kremlin politics are utterly insane, and everything's a, a fucking clown show, and nobody knows what's really happening because news media is uh, uh, terrifyingly bad at the moment. So,、um, good luck to everybody in the universe.、Uh, try to stay safe, everyone. I don't know what I can do about this at the moment. I feel. Powerless, and I think a lot of people feel powerless in the same way.、Um, in part, I wanted to build out a channel like this so that at some point I would have at least something of an audience in order to talk about things that I find really important and really, really powerful. And now that that seems to be happening and serious p- current events really are like are popping up, I don't know how to do that at the moment. And I start to feel that same sort of stress that I think is. Pretty universal,、um, which is this feeling of not knowing what's going on and not having any impact on it and not being able to change it effectively. And it just makes me want to bury my head in the sand and withdraw from the global political、um, stage because, ugh, which is, of course, a deeply entitled attitude and one that I'm working on evaluating at the moment. But、um, I really don't know what I can do to. Help the people in Ukraine or、uh, help people understand what's going on in this war because honestly, I don't know what's going on in this war or what's going to go on. And、um, everything again seems like a bit of a clown show to me, which is terrifying. So, I,、uh, yeah, I, I keep seeing posts on Instagram. Oh, by the way, I'm on Instagram now. You can follow me. I'm at Tiaboo YouTube. That's my whole title. It used to be Tiaboo YT, but I made that account、um, before I realized that there are a large number of white supremacists who make their Twitter or Insta handles like name YT because it's whitey, whitey, like whitey, like white person. I didn't realize that. I wanted to just show that I'm a YouTube content creator, but apparently that's been co opted by the far right. Right, great.、Um, so I changed it to Tiaboo YouTube, and that's me now.、Um, I'm doing the same thing on Instagram that I've been doing on YouTube, which is I'm just posting honest content. In this case, mostly I'm focusing on my fitness stuff.、Uh, I talk about it in some of my YouTube videos and stuff, but I really like lifting weights and I think it's really fun. I'm not super good at it, obviously,、um, but I like it and I like learning about it and I will attempt to express any of the things that I learn about it on the Instagram. So if that sounds inter- interesting to you, go and do that. I'm going with a pretty simple like, tagline and motivation for the whole gram, which is I'm a crowdfunded human because I am. Hello.、Uh, I don't make money off of ads. What's up?、Um, that, that is like a primary differentiation between myself and almost every content creator on almost every platform. I also will never take a sponsorship from anyone, which hopefully will、uh, help me avoid conflicts of interest and allow me to simply present my opinions as just opinions and not the sponsored corporate mouthpiece of some corporation or something like that by just staying the fuck away from advertisement. So、uh, that's the tagline is、um, I forget. No ads, never sponsored, nothing to sell. This is my anime training montage because that's what it's going to be.、Uh, anyway, check that out if you want to. Sorry for blathering. I'm all over the place this morning. Again, I just rolled out of bed, made tea, and my tea is too hot for me to drink. I just tested it. It's too hot. Hot damn. Call the police and the fireman. Too hot. Sorry.、Um, it's too hot for me to drink, so I'm not drinking it. And I really need to drink it because I need the caffeine, but we'll get there when we get there. And. I, I hope that some of that is in frame. I just blew on my tea really hard and I blew straight into it and it went and it splattered water all over my desk.
Fuck me, man. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a slightly better day than I am. Probably not, especially if you're living in the Ukraine or anywhere near Russia, which is suddenly taken, well, not suddenly, is now taking a belligerent global policy, which is insanity. We live in a post-mutually assured destruction world. What the fuck are you doing, Russia? Why you do this? I don't understand. Um, I guess they think that everybody's just going to roll over and let them do it. I don't think that's what's going to happen. This is going to be bad. Man, we'll find out. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's boggling my brain, and I'm sorry for blathering all over the place about it, but I don't, I don't particularly want to make a video that's like, my thoughts on the Russia situation, because that's stupid, and it's just going to add more to the endless flow of bullshit that's out there, and I don't know what's going on, so I'm not in a place to talk, but I still feel the need to talk about it, because it's happening. Ah, welcome to the world that we live in, I suppose. Anyway, I'm all blathery. Let's watch a show that focuses on different kinds of horrifying war and death and destruction for political ambitions and other kinds of gain and is much safer for us because it's more distant from our reality and it's it's removed emotionally from the reality that people are really fucking killing each other right now with high-tech weapons. Um... Yeah, so feels weird to be watching Gundam. That's part of why I'm talking about this is because we're watching a thing that is intrinsically focused on war and the individuality of war and the individuals who get caught up in a war-torn system. Um, and sort of in a strange way, the final events of episode one of Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam really, to me, in a weird way, sort of mirror what's going on right now. You've got a relatively peaceful location, and somebody shoots a big laser at them for no presumable reason, and we don't know what's really going on. Um, that's what it feels like. It's like, Shar, why? Why are you doing this? By the way, I'm not calling Putin Shar. Shar is way cooler than Putin. Fuck off, Putin. Oh god, is YouTube gonna, like, destroy my video because I keep saying Russia and Putin and Ukraine in it, and it's gonna auto-flag those? Yeah, probably. I don't give a fuck. I don't- I, I so don't care. Um, it's worth it. If people watch the video, people will watch the video, and if they don't, they don't. Likewise, if you want to skip through all this blathering, feel super free, guys. Just go to the, the video, and we'll actually focus on Gundam when we do. I just got shit to get off my chest in the morning here. Uh, I'm gonna try to sip this. Instant regret. It's too hot. Fuck. This is my life. This is what it's come to. No, this is normal. Um, gosh, guys, and gals, and everybody in between. I don't want to be exclusive. <sighs> I'm excited to watch Zeta Gundam, though. I really am. I liked first episode. I liked first episode. See, I can't talk. I liked the first episode. Um, I'm intrigued by Kamiyu as a character. Seems very different from Amuro with some similarities. Um, I've forgotten girl's name. I, I just forgot her name. I don't remember. I'm intrigued by the Titans, Titans, and the other factors, the egg, uh, all of which are in play to some extent, but I'm not 100% clear on what all the factions are, or why they're doing what they're doing, or why they're interacting the way that they're interacting, which again is a weird mirror to the world, it's like, who are you, everybody? It's hard to say what people's real motivations are, because there's so much falsehood out there. And then all of it's like, uh... Uh, layered with layers and layers and layers of different kinds of lies and motivational lies and actual lies. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's a scary time. It's been a scary time for a long time, but now it's kind of coming to a head and seems to be active and, and moving in certain directions. And it's terrifying. It's scary. Um, we'll see what comes of it as we, as we see what comes of it. I'm going to move off the topic and hopefully not come back to the topic. Um, let's focus on Zeta Gundam. So first off, comment spotlight. There was one overriding, overwhelming comment on episode one, and that was people were not happy about the version that I chose and the fact that it uses what I think is the U.S. opening. So I went and I grabbed the Zeta Rebel versions, which look about the same-ish, I think, um, but they have the actual OP the way that it, I think it's supposed to be. So we're going to have that in the future. There you go. Um, easy fix, no problem. 
Um, we're going to be watching episode two. Shit is exploding. Our boy has not found a Gundam yet, but I assume he probably will at some point. He's definitely exhibited some serious symptoms of being a new type, which is cool, but also scary. Um, and, uh, people are aware of new types, like solidly aware. This is the future post Amaro world. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Also, Lieutenant Bright, who may or may not be a lieutenant right now, is on the base where our boy is right now. So I'm assuming there will be some kind of smash together there, like something's going to happen. But I don't know. Uh, this could go any direction that it wants to, and Tomino is notorious for fucking around. So we shall see. All right. Weird intro. I apologize for it. Again, weird morning, weird day, weird world. Let's watch Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam Episode 2. Again, I've gone ahead and downloaded the Zeta Rebel version, which I assume that their name, Zeta Rebel, is named after Zeta, but I don't know who the Rebel is. Is it our boy? Is it Kamiyu? Is it Char? Who is it? I don't know. Who's the Rebel? Who's the Empire? It's hard to tell. Um, but I think that's a part of the point, and I think it should be interesting as we move along and move through. Mostly, though, I'm excited to see how things play in the aftermath of this, this explosion, and particularly how they play differently from the first season, where by this point in the season, Amuro was already getting into a Gundam and getting going um, while his side was being destroyed and while he contributed to its destruction, you might say. Um, so I don't know what's up. I, I, I don't know. We'll see. There are Kuroi Gundams everywhere, and I don't know what we're gonna do. Cool. Let's watch Zeta Gundam Episode 2. I've got it up and ready. It's the Zeta Rebel release. There will be two versions, picture in picture in the description, timer on YouTube, BB timer to count you down, early access and everything on Patreon. It's the way that I continue eating food, which is really important to me, at least. Um, if you can, if you enjoy consuming my content, please consider throwing me a dollar or more on Patreon. It helps me be alive, and that's really cool because being alive means I can make more content. That's the way that it works. Um, beep beep timer. Let's get into Zeta Gundam Episode 2. Great. It's so crisp. Look at it. Okay, I guess it's not actually cropped. I was just making a mistake. Okay. Dude, it looks so good. Now, the sound, I would much prefer that other OP, but the sound is, the, the, the visuals are, uh, there's no comparison here. Miles apart. Absolutely miles apart. All right. So why, Char? Why? I'm sorry, uh, Quattro Vagina? I forget his name. Oh boy. Adding insult to injury. Oh, right. Starting to hear right. Ooh, could it be? Could it be? No. Someone else. Hmm. 
Run, Kami, you. Run. Where are you running to? Gundam? Yep. Bum, 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 bum. Hmm. Yeah, what about these soldiers? Okay. So this isn't a destruction thing. Ah! Titans only enlist Earth. Lings. Great. That's the guy who we fought with, right? Yeah, Iceman. I hope we steal his suit. I think that's where we're going with this, right? <gasps> Captain? Damn right. Yeah, you fucking idiot. You don't know shit. Ah. So is Char Ayug? Fuck that guy. No, we have to fight! Wow, this is too real. Economic sanctions, what a weak policy. I'm so sorry for bringing up current events. I'm, I said I would stop. I'm gonna stop. Okay. Are those GMs? Ah, freedom fighter, Char. I mean, Quattro. Ooh. 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 He's got new tricks. I think you just suck. So we gotta get those those Mark II's out. Well, that guy's fucking dead. Holy shit, this is brutal. Oh, we knew that. These establishing shots are great. I, I oh, that's cool. Who is this? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> please, please don't give them the data. <laughs> Who is this goggle boy? I don't know if you can see anything through those glasses. All right. Man, it, the combat feels like it's gotten very dynamic, and I like it. Yeah, I am. Look at you. Look at you trying. He fought Amuro, bro. Oh, I guess he doesn't really know that until this. He's like the Red Comet. Mm-hmm. What a crazy scene. 
Oh, what a double crazy scene. That's cool as hell. Oh, hi, girl. Damn right. Oh, boy. Yeah, mid mid residential. Uh. Found it. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Is it Iceman in the Mark 2? I assume so. No, his got he he, he like dropped his. Okay. Why? Oh. That's... Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's hated because it's a military base, but of course the people who are there didn't have a choice in that. Whoa. Fa? Sneakity, sneakity, sneak! Let's go, sneaky boy. Oh, not so sneaky. Oh. Hi, guys. Who dad be? Yeah, it's gonna be a fucking problem. Who is Lieutenant Franklin? So this is an acquisition run. You're gonna get whomped, guy. You're gonna get super whomped. Hello, Bright. Ah, a machine. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> oh, you don't have time to get me to wait. Oh, he's just gonna get fucking angry. He's just gonna get fucking angry. <laughs> he's gonna just hop in the pilot suit? <laughs> Bye! Sweet. He's just mad. He's just pissed enough to do this. Hey, hey! Get out of my my cockpit! You're not a pilot. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you're in danger. You are severely in good job. Oh, that was cool. The way that her like her like hips twisted as she turned there, that was really interesting. Oh, it's so it's so similar. Eh. A random a random child just jumped in. You wanna bet? You wanna fucking bet? I think Lieutenant Noah or Captain Noah has seen something similar happen before. <laughs> Please don't let me hurt you. Damn right he's serious. Sorry, guys. Is that mid-roll? Sha! I'm gonna do it myself. Sha! <laughs> Seems like he might. That's a way to put it. Maybe more like Amuro than you know, right? What's up? Oh, what a cool, what a cool little sting!
Oh my god, it reminds me of Art of Noise. Actually, exactly. Strategic thinking. No. Oh, that guy. Fuck that guy. Is he gonna fucking step on him? Oh. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Come here, you. you're fucking out of your gourd. Oh, very scary. Very, very scary, very childish. Yes, yeah, so confusing. What if we do get captured? We just get to go hang out with Char? Wait. Uh-oh. He's gonna take down one of the others? Dude, you are upsetting a military operation right now. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. The data from his father's computer, of course. <sighs> Later! <laughs> Later, bye. I'm out. Commander now. So he's a commander or a captain? Both. But he doesn't smash him. He doesn't kill him. Oh. Are they going to take him with them? Is he gonna go hang out with Char? I mean, Quattro? <laughs> I think I've consistently done that every time, and I, I'm going to continue doing so. Uh, very familiar, huh? Oh, hi! Bro. Whoa! Whoa, what an angle! What a scene! Oh, that's so sick! F fucking brutal. Wow, they're taking both of them. As a girl, as a girl. What about the girl? There we go. It's violin swell. Make your choice. A small child ran up, jumped in the cockpit, and stole a, a piece of... Oh, fuck, what? I guess we gotta keep that train going. Holy... Welcome to the Titans. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're fucking assholes. No, they're not. They're a fucking hate group. Oh. Yep. Yeah, you're colonial, uh, uh, colonizing and militarizing. <laughs> Your officership, yeah, you don't matter. Oh my god, I hate this. Wow, they're just JoJo's beat upping him. Well, don't like the Titans very much. Neither does she. I like her. She seems like she's actually got a head on her shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's gassing. It's bad. Oh. The bird line? The, like, webbing thing. Okay. Thanks, friends. I guess we're friends now. <laughs> what a fucking unexpected turn of events. Oh, is he gonna touch it? Nope, he's through. He's safe. Welcome to space. Welcome to freedom. Oh, that's so sick. Here they come. And that's gonna be set up for next episode, I'm sure. Wow, they look like fucking Zakus. They look just like Zakus. Are they Zakus? Hmm. So, Iceman the fuckboy is Jared. Fuck you, Jared. Yeah, get him, Char. Ooh. An arrow through the knee. Because you suck. <laughs> Is that our ship? That's got to be our boat, right? How about instead of claiming what's possible or not, you just look at what's happening and determine what's happening. You dingus. Ho. Oh. oh, the... The hiss. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. He's gassing. And he doesn't have a normal suit. What is that? Oh, he's using a, a piece of... Yeah, to find it. Wow, and to seal it on its own. Smart boy, be smart. Fair enough. What a crazy turn of events. Ooh. Ooh, a different lighting on it, huh? Making it look a little bit different. A little bit more like a white Gundam. Ah. Uh. Huh. That's got to be Fiend, right? We got to cut there, right? Oh, man. I love that there. it doesn't cut immediately to, uh, like, post-credit or, like, like, previews. That's great.
cute. Okay, and then we'll be... Hello. Uh, all right. Well, that's a preview. And, well, that was an episode. Oh, how deeply unexpected in just about every possible way. Wow. How very interesting. Okay. Actual events. Shar recognizes the symbol of a new type, the signs of a new type. He feels a vibe. Explosions occur. God, that looks so sick. That, like, outgassing of an explosion and then it gets sucked into the vacuum of space as it goes is such a cool idea to represent in, in animation. And then the, the, the distribution of those particles outward as, like, a, uh, almost a beam of stuff and dust and things. There are so many cool ideas and so many, so many more, like... I don't know, interestingly integrated bits of physics and, and cool science and stuff that it's clear that the people making this, this episode are passionate about demonstrating in animation, and they do, and it's awesome. Um, and we start to learn a little bit more about ya boy here. Uh, I cannot forgive those soldiers. Oh man, this kid holds a grudge to the point where he will fucking steal a piece of military technology and go join a... Resistance movement with almost no information on who they are in order to get back at one dude who pissed him off. Huh. Interesting. Thus, of course, embroiling himself into a much more complicated, like, geopolitical, universo-political? Geopolitical would be, like, the world. Univer solar system-o-political? I don't know. Uh, situation. That's way more complex and also very simple. It seems... Morally, that he might have just happened to choose the right side here, but it's quite curious as to what's going to happen next as he does so, because clearly he's going against the Earth, but really he's going against the Titans, who are like, I don't know how to put them. It's pretty easy to draw analogies between the Titans and the way that they're viewing the world and, and other people. They're racist, essentially, against space noids, against people born and living in space. They only allow uh allow people from earth the main like poster child for them well the main bad guy looks a lot like um um Degin Zabi because of just the way that his face is shaped and the goggles and all that stuff right looks a lot like Degin Zabi so that's familiar and weird and then the main guy who pisses uh uh our main character who pisses Kamiyu off is Iceman Blonde guy who's like like poster child Aryan, so there's a there's like some stuff going on in terms of subtext and 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 what you're supposed to vibe from all of this stuff. Regardless, yeah, he's he's pissed at the Titans. He's pissed at everything. He's a pissed off boy, and I think his pissed offness is somewhat justified. I like this character. This character is expressed to us as someone who's involved in an organization that they don't necessarily agree with the purpose of, but probably, uh, just to extrapolate from what we've learned about this character, this Emma Sheen character, probably joined for idealistic reasons and is having that idealism crushed turn by turn. Really interesting. And then, of course, talks to this guy and chews him out a little bit, and he just dismissive, 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 asshole. Um, holy macaroni. And then, of course, we meet Captain Bright, who is Captain Bright, and then introduces himself later as Commander Bright. You also love, I, I really like the way that, I mean, I hate it, but I like the way that this guy is demonstrated as brushing everyone off and dismissing, like, potentially legitimate threats as, like, ah, it's probably nothing. Let's go fucking hang out. Who cares, man? It doesn't matter. Oh, Arr. And, of course, Bright is, like, spider sense is tingling. You're a fucking idiot. You just came from Earth. What do you know about this place? And this sets up a lot of the stuff about the Titans that we come to learn. 
right? They've got these commanding officers and these people who have never been involved in real combat, who have not lived out in space, and yet they are meant to be policing space, right? They're meant to be doing their... They're here to fight insurgents in space. That is their goal. And they're going to continue militarizing in space, which is going to continue making the people who live in space, who don't want to be militarized, colonized, and occupied by fucking random people from Earth who don't know shit about their way of life, are going to keep rebelling against them. So it's a continuous cycle. This is hyper-relevant <laughs> to the way that the way that global hegemons exert their power in the real world right now. It's it's ultra mega relevant. It's exactly what well, it's exactly what the United States has done for decades and decades. It's exactly what Russia has done to some extent in other nations for decades and decades. And it's exactly what China has done for decades and decades. Any any global hegemon uses this kind of power play in order to exert power over like resource valuable areas if they can control the populace there. But then it results in rebellions and, and insurgency and extremism and all of that comes back to bite us. But then all of that extremism feeds into the desire of people higher up back on earth in the titans you might say um or their commanding officers to produce more funding and establish themselves more solidly and create more military operations and more militarization and more occupation which of course feeds into the idea that the insurgents have which is that they're being occupied unjustly by an unfair global hegemon and so they become insurgents more what i never expected is that we were going to join the insurgency and we're going to go with Char? Char is going to be our fucking mentor? I'm sorry. I mean, Quattro Bajuba. Bajuba di Bajuba da. Yeah, sure. Him. He's going to be our mentor? That's the sickest choice ever. That's the, that's the sickest choice ever. What the fuck? That's amazing. It's, it's amazing. I like it a lot. I'm really excited to see how it's going to play. God, I look so I look so dumb and tired. I just looked at myself and I'm like <sighs> I look so dumb and tired. I think what I'm saying makes some sense though, so I'm okay with that. The point the point of my videos is not for me to fucking look pretty. That's not the purpose. I'm, I want to talk about the anime. But just all of that from this one line, you just arrived from Earth. You don't know what's going on, says Bright. Ah, oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Are you saying the eek are attacking? Yeah, maybe. Maybe just don't dismiss it, right? Be prepared for anything. Something weird happened. Maybe we should go check it out, guys. Instead of being like Iceman and just going, eh, it's probably a meteorite. Let's go fucking hang out. Have drinks. This fucking guy. Ugh. Where are you going? I'm peacing out. Just leaving. I'm handling the situation as you ordered. No, you're not. The Aeg are a group we must fight, which expresses everything, right? The point of view of the Titans is obviously flawed, but from their point of view, they simply must fight this group, which makes a lot of sense on paper, right? You look at an insurgent group, you're like, these people are fucking causing destruction and death. They're being terrorists. They're stealing our military technology and turning it against us. They have to be fought. But when you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, there's a question, which is, what does fighting them actually produce? Does it produce a reduction in terror? Or does it bolster their numbers? It's quite an interesting, like, political problem. It's a conundrum and a legitimate one. And I, to be clear, I am not in the real world saying either one is right, and I'm not on the side of insurgency by to any extent. And I hope... I hope that as we go through this, we start investigating and demonstrating that there's a lot of complexity going on on both sides of any sort of situation like this, that it's not cut and dried, and that the the people who are really at fault, the people who are really hugely flawed in a situation like this are the ones who see it as us versus them or cut and dried good and evil. Because once you start thinking of things in those terms, there's nothing you can do but view the enemy as a group who we must fight. They are the enemy because they're the enemy because they're the enemy. Which brings us right back to the fighting that was done in season one, right? Which is honestly like almost a meta commentary on season one. Why are we fighting the Zeons? Because they're bad. Well, they were bad, 
but there were reasons that they were bad. It was more complicated than that. And within the Zeons, there were multiple factions, and it was more complicated than that. And we can still root for Amuro and what he was doing in that situation. It seems like those fights were fights for some kind of survival or justice, especially when viewed from the lens of just looking at the white base crew, a family set out on their own trying to survive in a dangerous world with people continuously attacking them obvious what they're going to do next and it's obvious that we can get behind that but globally or universally and and universo politically does it make sense was it good was it right did it lead to better things for the universe for all the people living in it for the space noids for the people on earth as well i don't know it's a little bit harder to tell it's a little bit more unclear and that's really interesting because suddenly, we've gone from really simple political stuff, where everything was really simple and the reasons for the war made perfect emotional logic for all of us, and it didn't get that much more complicated than that until the very, very end, and even then, we essentially turned the Zeons into, into Giran-led Nazis, and it was like, okay, yeah, let's kill them, let's fight them, that's good. And we even had Shar turn against them and kill Cassilia and get his revenge, and that leads him to the place that he is now, to some extent, I'm sure. But suddenly there's nuance. Suddenly there's nuance to these character perspectives. And the characters that lack nuance stand out like a sore thr thumb. Iceman here stands out like a sore thrum. Uh, thrum. Sore thumb. Noah, bright doesn't stand out that way, right? He stands out because he's got a level head and we know what he's dealing with and he approaches every situation that we see him in in this episode from that perspective. Emma stands out in a different way too because while she gets whomped in this episode pretty badly, she's also thinking through things, right? We get this expression on her face as some of the other characters around her and some of her commanding officers make particular orders where she's like, is this the right thing to do? I am not sure. Which is great. We got characters doubting themselves and doubting their position and doubting the future. It's complicated. It's human. I like it. And we're only a couple minutes in. Okay. We move along. We learn that their purpose is to steal a Gundam. Super sick. A little damage to the colony cannot be avoided. We've come this far. So there's a little bit of darkness on both sides, right? Collateral damage is collateral damage. And Shara's has never been shy about collateral damage. If he can get to his goal, and that goal, usually I think I view Shar in this sense as a, a hard utilitarian. If getting to that goal leads to greater rewards in the future, the means justify the, or the ends justify the means. And whatever small collateral damage we cause to the colony doesn't really matter. It's a military occupied base anyway. Who cares? Which is dark and scary and spooky, but it is the way that a lot of war uh, war calculus is done. So, fair enough, Char. I gotta mention this quick scene, just as it's going by, zoom, zoom, zoom. The combat sequences feel so much more dynamic than season one. I'm not sure what it is exactly. I think it might be partly the paths that the the suits track as they move across screen. Um, and just a, an understanding of spatial representation and, and relationship that feels more coherent than it did before. Um, it just feels like more effort is put into where things are placed. Now, there are episodes in Gundam 1, in, in first uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, that have elements and scenes that are really cool in a spatial way with characters in their suits flying around each other and stuff and those are great but it's not necessarily the rule and so far in in zeta it has been the rule um these fights have been dynamic and interesting and visually visually intriguing and cool all the way through this episode and through parts of the last episode and i think that's awesome when will they realize that this place is not a part of Earth? This is another really interesting perspective, right? They are exerting authority because power is power and authority is authority over a space that is not theirs to exert authority over. So this is a battle for independence and freedom. Very interesting. Um, cool. Moving along. Oh, man. We get this just hint of the mechanical stuff, right? Pulling the thing out, this little moment where he tosses it up and grabs the gun again, and then pops the the hood and has, like, Vulcan cannons. There's so much going on with these mechs now. They're such new models, and we get to see them absolutely dominate OG GMs, which we knew were cannon fodder, but this just demonstrates the difference and the the expanding and, like, like uh, uh, exponential growth of Gundam mobile suit technology, and it's super cool. 
But this sort of dynamic stuff, and and I want to say, this is what I was talking about when we were talking about, I wonder if the whole cockpit is going to be visible. Like, are we, are we going to be able to see through the whole thing all the time? That could be really interesting. Bada bing, bada boom, a scene where we're showing a character's expression inside a cockpit while behind them with no cut in, just because it's visible behind them, a GM explodes behind him. So much more dynamic, right? Such a feeling of actual spatial relationship between these elements. It's huge in terms of the way it makes us think about the, the, the people in these suits and the way that they're fighting with each other, and I think it's excellent. It's such a level up. In so many ways, Zeta is, is already such a level up um, in terms of the nuance of the characters and the reasons that they're doing what they're doing, except for, except for your boy, Kamiyu, who is not nuanced at all. The boy is angry, and he's angry. <laughs> so far, the thinnest character in the whole thing. I guess Iceman is the thinnest. But even he is like a representation of, of like somebody who who is hardline and all, not radicalized but just buys is just drinking the Kool-Aid right just buys his his government's representation of of the the universal political system and like how it is right now and it's just a patriot which is terrifying <laughs> Boom. also cool explosions look i miss the pink explosions too but getting blue smoke and orange yellow explosions is pretty neat i'm down I got no problem with that. And I think we, we do spend some time expressing that these GMs are antique and that really the war, the battlefield of the future is going to be the higher tech mechs. So that's pretty cool. Also, we just show that Char is dope because, I'm sorry, Quattro Bajubaji. And we hop on over to here. I really like this scene. This like... This scene with the core of light down the center, super neat. And we meet this boy. He seems reasonable at first. Just going through all these, these scenarios and all these situations. You can tell by looking at it that we didn't manufacture it, but why to green Noah 1? Why did we put it over there? What's going on? Um, great. I can't even see the battle from here. Again, take your glasses off. It's real simple, dude. Oh, and again, super dynamic stuff, right? Like, oh my god, look at, everything's moving. And it's all, it's all moving at different rates and in different directions. It's really cool. All the internal screens are super cool. The explosions are neat. Brutal and neat. Um, characters full die, but we knew that. That's been happening for a long time. I don't super love the screen tones in the middle of the explosions. Let me pause at a point where I can show you what I can, what I'm talking about. They're unique, um, so these, these, like, straight black lines in the midst of the explosions, I feel, I don't love them. They break everything up. I feel like they're meant to exhibit, like, pieces of debris going quickly in directions, but it just sort of breaks up the flow of everything to me. Um, as do the sparks, the yellow screen tone sort of things, these, like, straight yellow lines that are crackling everywhere. I get it, and it looks cool to some extent, but I don't love it. It just doesn't vibe with me. The explosions themselves, I think, look great. Okay, moving along. This is one of the few scenes that I wrote down. I wrote down 750 fly whoosh because it's a fly whoosh. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that change of momentum. And then the miss. Tries to do it. Can't do it. Bounces. Shatters. Explodes. Amazing. Amazing. Terrifying, but amazing. Okay, girl is here. Girl trying to save mom. Doesn't go so well. Does save mom, presumably. But, uh... Then the house gets fucked. Alright, so we go here. She's ready to go. I'm a member of the Titans, but you haven't had sufficient training. It's okay. I've been trained on simulators. And ya boy just runs in and hops in her car. Hey, girl, let me steal your whip! I'm sorry. But for real, like... I can't forgive him. I hate him so much. I'm going to steal this piece of top secret military technology. But he hops in and he knows what he's doing. How much of what he knows what he's doing is because he stole a manual from his dad? And how much of it is because he's a new type? I don't know. Who's his dad also? Right? He's Lieutenant Franklin. Who's that? That's not, that's not Scary Boy with the eyes, right? It can't be. So who is it? I don't know. I don't know. Get out. It's dangerous. No, it's dangerous from you. But he says it. Dad's computer data. Okay. I like the way that she runs away. I also really like this moment right there. Yep. I, it's such a simple, silly thing. It, it, I, I feel like this character is my Sela. First off, 
is is first first like slightly older girl have met is cute cool hair new character design new sayla never gonna pr- replace the old sayla but is the new sayla just this moment where the like she turns is looking back or is looking back over her right shoulder and then moving her right leg forward the way that they just draw the hips twisting there and then the the like lines in her in the fabric of her um like spacesuit in her her normal suit i really like it i really like it it feels right to me all right this particular moment i think is a direct parallel to an identical scene from mobile suit gundam one episode one uh after amaro gets in his mech and gets up which is really cool it's not that simple to operate but then of course there's no way an amateur can operate it a child shouldn't be operating it and then only one person has ever seen something like this before right noah watches a child jump into a mobile suit and take action when no one else is doing so and he feels a familiar vibe. And then watches as he leaves with the enemy because he hates... <laughs> he hates Titans. Sit. Hi. Hello. What's going on? Well, nobody's targeting me. Jared fucked up. He's gone. And we're going after that MP. So I don't know why we... Oh, I guess that's the guy who first like got into the fight with him. Yeah, okay. And our boy is an angry bully. Or more accurately, he's a kid who's been bullied and then gains power, right? Like gets into that situation where suddenly he has power over the bully and just becomes what he hates. This is interesting. This is very interesting. And I wonder if it's going to have ripple effects throughout this character's journey. If this is what happens when he gets just a smidge of power over an individual, what will happen when he, still childish, gains more power over someone else, over groups, over a war, over everything? I don't know, but it's very scary. And it could be an object lesson in what you don't want to, like, a sort of a weird power fantasy, uh, uh, don't hurt me, don't fuck with me, because you don't know what'll happen. Almost in a way of, like, Be nice to the nerdy kids at school, because one day they'll be signing your paycheck. Sort of a a venomous, vitriolic viewpoint on human interaction. Which is fair enough, but it's also not terribly productive. So, cathartic for ya boy Kamiyu, and a really cool scene. Maybe cathartic for anybody who's watching this who's been bullied, who feels like they're downtrodden, who feels like someone else has power over them. But the response of just gathering power in order to fight the person and harm them doesn't seem right to me. It seems, like, flawed. It seems super flawed. Which is good. It's really good. Again, our characters have nuance. They have flaws. Specific ones that aren't just, like, Amuro doesn't know if he wants to fight. Well, Camus knows that he wants to fight. But are his reasons legitimate? And what will they lead to? That's way cooler. That's, that's way more complicated and way more interesting to me. Again, literally every aspect, literally every aspect of Zeta Gundam has been miles more interesting so far than the first couple episodes of Mobile Suit Gundam. And that's in no way to knock Mobile Suit Gundam. I mean, I guess it is. It's a simple show. It's older. It's, it follows some formula stuff. But this, this is cool to me, man. This is really cool to me. I like it. I like it very much. I much very like it. Okay. He, 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 he. Ah, ah, ah. And we get this vision for a moment of what could be. Camille gone rogue, gone insane, gone murderous. Revenge. Fantasies. What's he doing? Wait. And Shaw reads it. He's not an enemy. No, he's not. I want to join you. Oh, shit. Come you. And so he does. And so he bashes this guy down. And he starts thinking. So this is more narrative convenience than anything that Noah gets those Amaro vibes. But obviously it clicks something into place for us. And I think it's valuable. That boy knew my name. What? What does he know? How strange. 
So he gives him the chance to get out, and he does let him out. Get the fuck out. Get out. And so he does. And I almost expected him to let him into his hand and just crush him. But of course, that would be a little brutal for a main character. And so he lets him down. He is merciful to some extent. And Shaw reads this. I think we can trust this kid. We might have just hit a fucking boon. Because presumably Shar hasn't found a new new type to pilot, pilot suits around with him, right? And now he just did. So he just came in to steal a mobile suit and came out with potentially the best pilot in the universe and two mobile suits. Good job, Shar. I mean, Quattro Bajubaji. Sure. I love this scene. This is so, it's the same color scheme. Which is so such a great touch. It's the same color scheme as our, our like Amaro introduction scene when Amaro's tinkering in his room. It's the same vibe. It, he's Amaro too, just different. And it's great. It's really cool. So I also love this cut. This is the coolest cut in the episode to me. I think um maybe tied with the swoopity whoosh, because that was amazing. But this, a random GM comes in swinging. God damn it. Comes in swinging. Yum, boom. Instant cut to catch, right? Like, as soon as we cut in, it's caught. Slight movement. Pivot. Swing. Sorry. Keeps doing that. I'm just going to play through it. Boom. It's weighty. The cuts are cool, and it almost kills his best friend, presumably. Yikes. Zap, zap, boom. Cut-ins for everybody talking. Roberto, don't fall behind. And away we go. And he notices the girl. Fa. Fa. I guess that's her name. I hate the Federation forces, and I hate the Titans even more. Oh. Well, all right. Well, be on full alert. They're going to be coming after us. And of course they do. Noah walks in. Oh, bright. How did this happen? Also, why was this training done in a residential zone? What the fuck, man? Oh, yeah, this guy's name is Basque Om. What a name. Why was it done here? They would have avoided my... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I have physical force. You're not allowed to question me. I have a fist in your face. Oh, okay. So that's how the Titans make their decisions. It's might makes right. Yeah, you could see why people might rebel against that, right? You can see why people might go, okay, I'm going to go get some might, and then I'll be right. And fuck you, get out of my territory. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And Emma, this is one of those moments, right, where we get nuance. This character who is presumably loyal watches what happens while she's walked in with this guy who she's like, this guy knows what's up. He seems to be giving good orders and, and has a good head on his shoulder. Uh, my commanding officer just punched him for no reason for asking a question that was relevant and is also what I was thinking. Huh. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. But of course, she's still an officer in a military hierarchy, so it's desertion if she leaves. And the reason he's punched? You're talking back. A common officer like you shouldn't talk back. This is an, an abusive father. Uh, archetypally, right? A child like you shouldn't talk back. I have power in this situation. Just listen, follow orders, and shut the fuck up. Your position is not to question the orders you've been given, only to follow them. Well, that's a terrible way to run a system. This is a Titan's base. We do things differently from the re regular Federation forces. Yeah, but why? Is it so that you feel like you're pee-pee big? It seems like you're doing it because you want you to feel like you're pee-pee big. Big pee-pee. Little eyes. But we're part of the same Federation forces. Nah. We're here for a specific purpose. We don't care about the people involved. We don't care about the residences. We are to defeat the Aeug because they have joined forces with our enemies, the Zeons. All right. I said I was going to try to avoid current events, but I got to bring this up. Huge part of Russia's currently insane justification for the invasion of Ukraine is that Ukraine is harboring Nazis. Lots of them. It's using an ancient fear, an old fear, an old enemy to bring up hatreds and to stir up, like, popular support. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. But it is what they're doing. 
It's the one thing worse than us, so we have to go and root it out. This justifies us. If they're pure evil, any evil that we, that we perform in order to fight them is justified. It's a little too real. It's a little too real. How are we supposed to come up with sufficient tactics if we have to think first about the native space noids? Our purpose is not to save the people here or to protect them. It's to prevent the spread of universal evil. So if we have to kill all the space noids here, who cares? That's not a genocide that makes us equivalent to the people that we're fighting. Not at all. No, 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 no. We're doing it for good reasons, because they're bad. It's pretty fucking amazing how well the logic lines up. It's pretty fucking amazing. And it's a credit to Tomino and the writing staff because it means that after a few years, after the success of Mobile Suit Gundam, they spent time thinking about what would change in the universe and about how people would interact. And more importantly, I think they spent time studying the way that actual political powers work against each other because Mobile Suit Gundam felt like a story. This feels like a universal political landscape where things actually sort of make sense. And while these characters and their groups are sort of strawmanning themselves as like the worst version of themselves, the way they're doing so and the actual things that they say and the, the, the results that come from that are way too real. Way too real. It's very interesting. But, of course, the more you proceed to convert this colony as your base, the more you're encouraging the EG to develop. Why do you refuse to understand the facts? Well, because I'm a hegemonic imperialist and I want to expand power. It's not that I don't necessarily understand it. It's that it feeds into my desire for more power and I don't care. Yikes. And of course, this guy comes in and gives him the extra womp, smacks him, slides into screen. Fucking. <sighs> How dare you do that to a superior officer? Your rank doesn't matter. Your martial law is not in effect. How could you say that after the hostility you caused? You're only a common officer, so shut up. And they gang up. Physical might makes right against Bright Noah. And beat the shit out of him. This guy waltzes away. Emma salutes because she has to. But she does a little... Hmm. That didn't seem good. No, Emma. It didn't seem fucking good. All right, there are enemy troops waiting for us. Away we go. It's super sick. This moment feels really impactful for our character. He goes out into space for the first time, and it is revealed before him in its, all its majesty. It feels like freedom as he jolts off into the wild darkness of the void. And, of course, fighting. These things look like Zaku's. I don't know if they are. This scene is really cool with the flashing lights in the background. I'm just skipping through a little bit because I want to skip through a little bit. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bam, boom, bang. Blam, 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 blam. They've got a big boat over there, and that's probably where we're going. And your boy got hit. The air is being lost. He does a smart because he's smart and is saved. And he drifts off in a shiny, white-looking Gundam just because of the lighting toward an unknown future. A future that feels so very nostalgic. And space presents itself in front of him. And that's our real inciting incident of Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. Ah! Oh, yeah! 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 I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. What can I say? I'm in. This shit's sick. Fucking cool. Fucking good episode. Good writing. Good animation. Cool characters. Sounds great, too. Oh, yeah. That sting at 1230 was the coolest thing. Hold on, I gotta find it. Yeah. Lieutenant, there's one more unit. 
One more unit. Do it again. That sounds exactly like a riff from the Art of Noise. I think it's from close to the end or close to the edit. I'm gonna get fucking copyright claim for this. That's okay. I'll find it. We'll just make it a tiny clip. Okay, listen. That riff. It's almost the same. It's a little different. But that those first couple notes of it are like almost the same. <laughs> that's great. I love that sting. I think it's really cool. Anyway, that's it. Um, I think I got everything. Ayug is attacking. Is Shar Ayug? Yeah, it seems so. Titans only enlist Earthlings. Yep. Uh, Captain Bright. He's a captain now. Lots of cool animation things that I wrote down. A machine. Lieutenant Franklin is his father. We don't know who he is yet, but we'll find out at some point. Maybe. Whether he's dead or not, I don't know. Whether he's a, an engineer or not, I don't know. Who knows, man. But overall, really cool episode. Everything has leveled up so much in this episode. Um, I'm so excited for the rest of Zeta. If it can continue at like 75% of what it did in this episode for building out these characters, building out this world, building out these factions and the way that they're fighting each other and also expressing it all in animation and style and storytelling the way that it's been doing, this is going to be a lit season and I'm so excited. Again, um, we know going into this that Zeta is one of the like the most critically acclaimed sections of Gundam and I'm starting to figure out why. It's super cool and I'm super happy to be watching it, everybody. All right, we're going to wrap there. I've been Tiabu. This has been Zeta Gundam. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, please stay safe. If you know anybody in Ukraine, uh, uh, try to help them if you can. I don't know what you can do individually. If I come up with any ideas for what you can do individually, I'll make a separate video about it. But at the moment, I got nothing. Um, the world is crazy. Try not to bury your head in the sand. Try to improve yourself as a person if you can. And try to reach out to the people around you who you care about. Because things might get really scary really quickly. And it's not worth holding small grudges in the face of a world that might go up in flames soon um i don't mean to fear monger that's never my goal but scary things may be happening focus on what matters to you in this moment because uh it's important and use this as an opportunity to determine what is really important to you to your life and to the future of yourself and the people around you and this world as a whole and start start doing it um because we we don't have the time to waste. None of us do. Not, no, no one of us has time to waste. We are mortal. And our systems and institutions may be mortal too if we don't stand up to protect them. So stay safe out there. Um, parse every bit of information that you read or experience uh, as well as you possibly can. Try to find as many different sources of information as you can because misinformation and lies and falsehoods are everywhere. And I don't mean that in a way where you should start seeking out conspiracy theories, but um, that's what a lot of people are going to be doing and a lot of people are going to be expressing things that are not true. Um, so try to keep a level head on your shoulders, take a couple of deep breaths, drink enough water. Have some green tea. Try to get good sleep if you can. And I will see you next time for mobile, more Mobile Suit Gundam. Good luck. I hope we're all here in a week. Peace.